Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to your video. This is all gonna be about method overloading. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So what is overloading? Well, it's the whole idea that we can have one method, but we can have a couple different variations. And these variations are going to exist as their own method, but we invoke them all using the same name. So for example, let's say we have some object and we call a method test. Well, this is going to go to some method test and it's going to invoke it. It's going to be in whatever class this is. So let's say this is a user. Maybe we can call it you. And it comes from the user class. Well, inside a user, we're going to define that test method. But we also might have another version which is going to take an integer like so. And that's going to go to a different version of test and we could pass in a value. So for example, we could pass in five. That's going to go to this version. You can see they have the same exact name, but they're a little bit different because they either have different number of parameters or different types. So we could have a third one in here where we actually have a string. It's still one parameter, but the types are different. So these three are all considered overloads. So we have one test method with three overloads. Now why? The benefit here is that we can pass in different values. So for example, we could pass in a string with the value five. So if you have methods that you need to be able to accept various different types, and maybe the functionality is just a little bit different, you can do that with overloads. Now you can see these all have to be unique, and this is what's known as the method signature. The identifier is all the same in this situation, but the, the parameters are different. The return type though is not part of this. So for example, if we have these two methods, they're both called test, they both take no arguments passed in, but one returns an integer and one returns a string, these are not overloads. This one is going to cause a compiling error because the return type does not count when it comes to method overloading. So if you need to do this, what you would have to do is you'd actually have to make two methods with different names. So you could have test that returns an integer and then test2, which returns a string, or whatever you wanted to call it. So that's your introduction to overloading. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that occasionally you'll have an overloaded method call a different version of the same method. So for example, if it can take a string, but then it will convert it to an integer, and then call the integer version. So you can kind of have these chains, and that's all done behind the scenes. The user doesn't have to care about that. So in the upcoming videos, we're gonna be talking about overloading. Another thing you should know is Overloading is not for the purpose of making optional parameters, although sometimes you will see that. So for example, maybe you have something that requires an integer, and then you make an overload where that integer is not required. There is a better way to do that, and we're gonna be talking about that in the upcoming videos. But basically, in the method definition, if we have a parameter int x, we can assign it a default value like so. So that is the better way to assign defaults versus using overloads. But you will occasionally run into that. It's not the end of the world, it's just not best practices. So throughout the upcoming videos, we're gonna get into this a little bit more, so stay tuned, I hope you guys are excited.